Okay, so uh, welcome everyone to uh, the new semester of uh, TCS Plus. Um, today we have uh, Ron Canetti, but before we begin, let me uh, quickly thank uh, my co organizers. So, Nindya Dev was actually here, so you can see him here. Hi, Nindya, uh, as well as uh, Clement Canon, um, uh, Gautam Kamat, Ilya Rosenstein, and uh, Thomas Vidik. Um, also, I should say before we uh, before we move on, uh, maybe go around the table. We usually do that. We have this tradition. So here's uh, Clément Canon. Hi, Clément, with a group from Stanford. And here is uh, Irfan Sadeki Azer from the Indiana University. Hello, Irfan. Thanks for joining. Mm. And we have, I think, a new group. Uh, hello, hello uh, Giram Rito from ETH Zurich. Everyone. Um, and we have K. Krishnan with uh, East Carolina University. Hello, everyone. And uh, Oksada, who's joining from uh, Boston University. Uh, she's actually a co author on this uh, paper, uh, the paper that Ron will present today. And we have, I believe it's Sam McGuire from UCSD. We can't see you, but I believe you're there. <laughs> okay, so hi, Sam. Um, Okay, so let me also maybe quickly mention the next few talks. So uh, you're welcome to join us in two weeks. Uh, we'll have uh, Seter Asadi, uh, and uh, in two weeks after that, uh, Shayano Vaitskaran uh, will speak here. So that's it for introductions, I believe. And so today, uh, as I was saying, we're very happy to have Ran Kanetti uh, and um, Ran graduated from uh, the Weizmann University or Weizmann Institute uh, in 1995 under the supervision of the dead gold like he was the IBM researcher um, until 2008 uh, he then joined Tel Aviv University where we uh, intersected for some years uh, it was fun to have him as a colleague um, and he's now partly in uh, Tel Aviv University and Boston University um, today he will tell us about fully by deniable interactive encryption. So thank you, Ron, for joining us. And please, okay. uh, go thank ahead. you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Th thank you. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Go okay. Ahead. And I think there is a little bit of delay in the uh, in the video, but uh, never mind. Just don't move yeah. much. We yeah. won't notice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Um, okay, so so thanks very much for for inviting me. Uh, um, so I'm going to talk about uh, fully by deniable interactive encryption, and this is joint work uh, uh, with uh, uh, Sandal Park, which is now uh, learning studying law at Harvard. She just graduated from MIT, and uh, uh, and, and, and Oksana uh, uh, Pobur Poburinaya, that uh, uh, is uh, soon to graduate from uh, from BU. Uh, and uh, I must say that uh, I'm a little bit humbled to talk about this because this is really mostly the work of Oksana and Sanu and my, my uh, job here was mainly to be a cheerleader and kind of support and say that it's going to work somehow, work somehow. Uh, 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 in the many uh, 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 sad moments but everything seemed to fall apart. Um, uh, but anyway, maybe kind of my... Uh, uh, lack of a, uh, intimate knowledge with this is uh, going to be a blessing because I would like to give like a more high level overview of this work that uh, will be accessible to a general TCS audience. And uh, maybe I'll touch a little bit of the, you know, the IO details in the last slide for the IO aficionados, but uh, the talk will be mostly IO free. Um, so uh, hopefully more accessible. Um, anyway, so, so, uh, so, you know, maybe actually another subtitle of this talk is, uh, you know, the, the wonderful things that you can do with obfuscation. And uh, hopefully this will kind of motivate more people to actually talk about this, uh, work to, to work on this. Okay, so, but, but let me start. So, uh, okay, okay, this works. Uh, so, let's go back to, uh, uh, to Crypto 101 uh, or our notion of uh, use secure channels. Right, so so we have Alice and Bob that would communicate uh, uh, privately, and uh, uh, they, you know, Alice want you know saying to Bob, you know, I don't feel like doing my homework. Uh, maybe I want I want to watch a movie, 
and she wants to send it securely so that Bob will, will hear, but nobody else will know what's going on. So the way we know how to do this is to, uh, you know, so to emulate this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, lead pipe, we we do encryption, and we know that if we do semantically secure encryption, then it gives us the effect of a lead pipe, in the sense that the adversary that at least the hears the communication can learn nothing. Great. Um, but uh, what about uh, other adversaries, the more inquisitive adversaries that actually go, you know, what about the mother that goes to Alice and says, you know, what did you just say to Bob? Uh, uh, so if Alice really used the, the slat pipe or whatever uh, 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 other physical emulation of it uh, uh, to talk to Bob to the other room, then it can say, look, I, well, I just said I was studying, you know, what do you want? And uh, uh, in fact, then uh, the mom gets suspicious. She goes to Bob, you know, what did Alice say? Oh, she said that she was studying, everything is fine. Uh, and uh, and of course the you know the the mother can be suspicious and try to 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 query, but there's nothing that she can learn from the communication except for that. Uh, and indeed, you know, furthermore, what if Bob uh, decides to uh, 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 to uh, annoy Alice and say that no, actually say say that actually he actually said she was going to watch a movie, even then. Uh, 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 this channel doesn't give Alice, uh, the, the mother, any uh, advantage in trying to figure out what really happened, right? Because then she goes back to Alice and Alice says, no, I said I was studying. And the mother can try to play games, but she has no uh, help from the communication to tell her which really happened. Uh, and then it can go on and on. So, so what we have that that the ideal secure channels really give us more than just plain secrecy uh, against eavesdroppers. So, uh, so we say that parties can freely lie about what they actually were sent, uh, uh, independently of what they actually did, uh, uh, and uh, and even if parties disagree and claim different values of what happened, uh, uh, then the the channel gives no no help. Uh, to to this external uh, adversary or external party to to really realize what happened, uh, and this of course good, but there's no coordination of play. You know, they want to play against each other, and, and furthermore, uh, uh, with this channel, even if Alice wanted to prove uh, uh, what she really said, you know, for for a bribe or for whatever, she really can't. I mean, there is no way she can actually prove what she said. I mean, it's just like happened. Whatever happened, happened. And there is no way anybody will know ever know what happened except for the parties present. Um, so can we get such an effect when we use uh, uh, just you know uh, 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 software encryption? I mean, no hardware channels. You know everything is uh, is sending open. We're just using software protection. Um, so so let's see what happens with standard public encryption. Uh, so. We know that say the public encryption or encryption in general leaves kind of leaves traces, right? So uh, in order to send this up to C, Alice has to Alice and Bob have to have a key, uh, uh, maybe public key or the shared key. Never mind. And furthermore, Alice has to use randomness to to encrypt a, a message, right? Otherwise, it's not secure. So there are those traces that uh, the parties have. And indeed, uh, 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 the the adversary or the mother can actually go and try to to use this in order to verify what happened, right? So show me your your all your private state, you know, your, your keys, your randomness, everything. And the point is that in general, encryption is a committing operation. I mean, often in what we use, uh, and uh, there's only once the cipher text is out there, there's only one way to open it. Uh, so really, uh, uh, we kind of lost all the uh, this uh, uh, flexibility or deniability of of this of the lead pipe. And the question that was asked by this this paper of deniable encryption back in the you know the previous millennium was uh, that uh, uh, can you have encryption that emulate uh, back this uh, uh, this lead pipe effect? Of uh, being of uh, uh, not committing the parties to the to 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 the plain text, uh, allowing the parties to still freely claim what, uh, whatever they want about what happened. Um, so uh, so 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 we can talk about different uh, variants of this, right? So so we can talk about the variant where uh, uh, so uh, the variant where the the uh, the attacker uh, goes to the to the sender. 
and it's asked, you know, show me your, uh, uh, your, your local randomness. But that's the only thing that uh, now the sender has. Um, if the key was a public key. Uh, and it can go to Bob and, you know, show me your uh, decryption key. In fact, show me the randomness that you use in order to, gen to generate uh, all keys. Um, and it can go to both, right? It can say, you know, both to Alice and to Bob separately and get all the information and then try to decide what happened. Um, so, so this is uh, so this is the the, the concept. Um, so, so, how to do it? So, first, you know, just uh, as a starting point, if you only want to do uh, uh, symmetric encryption when you, the parties already have some pre-shared key that was uh, kind of shared beforehand, uh, uh, without uh, uh, you know. And, 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 and the mother had no way to know it's so how the key was shared, uh, then uh, 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 deniability is easy. Uh, and, and it just used the one-time pad, uh, right? So it's, I think my picture here is getting in the way, but uh, hopefully not too much. Uh, okay, so, so, uh, so, so just use a, a, a one-time pad. Maybe I'll put this to here, better. Um, okay, uh, and then one time pad is really kind of like uh, perfectly the uh, by denial scheme because uh, after you see the cipher text, I mean, anybody, not just uh, Alice or Bob, anybody can uh, can demonstrate uh, uh, that the C was an encryption of anything that uh, that you would like by just uh, XORing, you know, by, by demonstrating the, the corresponding key. So it's really completely by denial. And you know, in some sense, job done. Uh, so, is this an easy problem? Uh, of course, when there is a, this key ahead of time, which is long enough and pre-shared, then the problem is easy. But the question is how to create this key and how to generate a shared deniable key uh, uh, in an open network, right? If you want to make it uh, to make it uh, uh, useful. Um, so, so the question is how to create the shared key. Uh, uh, so what we need is this, this deniable key exchange or alternatively deniable public key encryption, which is kind of essentially the same. Uh, so, so really the problem is uh, the public key case. Uh, uh, yes. But even if you stay in the secret key, is the way to shrink the size of the key? It's not obvious, like using pseudo random generators? So, so right. So that's a that's a good question. Uh, uh, so, so first, two random generators by themselves will not work, uh, uh, as 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 uh, right because we don't know we will not know how to show the seed. But I think in general, uh, uh, you will need the key to be as long as the message, if you want to fully deny it, or at least kind of as long as the you know the number of bits that you want to deny. Uh, just information theoretically. So in some sense, if you want a message that is uh, fully deniable uh, uh, to any string that you want, then in some sense, there's no uh, better way than just doing one time pad in terms of key size. You can think about other notions where you just want, you know, you want to encrypt a long string and just deny parts of it. And then you would want, then you might, then you can do it with potentially with a shorter key. And then there are questions there. And there are some solutions in the literature, some things are not known, but let me not go there. Okay, so you basically, you're uh, giving up with that. You're saying, that's okay, the key is going to be as long as the message, but that's fine. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And, but, right. Uh, but, right, but even then, it's not clear, you know, of course, uh, how to do it uh, with the public key, when Alice and Bob uh, have no secret shared information, Say the communication is authentic. Authentic. Uh, uh, we don't worry about authentication, but it's just issue of uh, uh, how to agree on 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 a, on a key uh, in a deniable way, uh, or alternatively, how to do this uh, public key uh, encryption. Um, okay. So again, so let's talk about uh, uh, public key encryption and deniable public key encryption. Um, so, uh, so again, we have uh, uh, this process where uh, there, uh, Bob has its own randomness R, which is used, you know, to generate uh, the public key and the secret key. And he sends the public key to, to Alice, 
and Alice has its randomness S, which is uh, used to encrypt the message M, and you send the ciphertext, which is computed as a function of the public key, the message, and her own randomness. Uh, and then Bob decrypts uh, 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 ciphertext. This is a deterministic operation using uh, uh, the secret key that was chosen before. Right? Um, and, uh, and now we want to make this deniable. So again, we have uh, uh, we have the mother that wants to uh, uh, to see all the uh, all, all the randomness, uh, all this uh, secret state, and uh, um, and, uh, and and then Alice and Bob want to be able to open the message of the communication that was used to 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 send one message as as something that was used to send another message. Uh, so so uh, let's try to write the formal definition. Uh, so so now our scheme is going to be uh, uh, on the standard uh, a public encryption scheme in the sense of there is a gen algorithm, the encryption algorithm, the decryption algorithm. In addition, we add two other algorithms we called S fake. Uh, that's the algorithm that Alice uses, or the sender uses, in order to to fake its own randomness. And then there's R fake. That's the algorithm that the receiver uses in order to uh, fake its own randomness. Uh, and then uh, what we want, we want uh, first there's correct next and semantic security as usual for probably for those three algorithms. Uh, and then we want the uh, we want S fake. That's the algorithm that in general takes uh, the secret uh, uh, coins of uh, uh, of uh, of the sender, and then the the public communication, which is the public key and the ciphertext that already happened, uh, and then the message, which is the real message that was actually used in order to you know that was encrypted there, and this other M prime, which is the fake message. And now this algorithm should output some fake random input for the sender that is going to be consistent with M prime. We've got to exactly define what this means, uh, uh, but that's S fake. Uh, and we also have R fake, which is uh, uh, the the corresponding algorithm for the receiver that gets the receiver's randomness, the communication, the actual message, and the the fake message. And then you're going to, and then it's going to output a fake R prime that is consistent with M prime. So what do I mean by by consistent? Um, so so what I want uh, uh, is is the following. Uh, uh, so I want that uh, uh, so for all messages M and M prime. Okay, uh, uh, the following two random variables are going to look indistinguishable. And let me describe the processes to how these random variables are being generated. So the first process is an honest encryption and decryption of M prime, right? So, so we have an R, which is shown as in random, and, uh, and using R, you generated the public key and the secret key. And then there is the, uh, the S, the, the sender randomness was chosen at random. And then the ciphertext was used, it was, was computed as encryption of M prime. And then what the adversary sees is the sender randomness, sorry, the receiver randomness, the sender randomness, the message, the, and the communication, which is the public key in, 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 the, in the ciphertext, right? So this is kind of what the adversary would see, that what the mother would see after a, a kind of coercion attack uh, uh, when really that was the M prime was full sent. And on the other hand, there's this other distribution, uh, uh, the fake distribution, which is the following. So first R was chosen at random and really uh, uh, R, uh, PK and SK was generated from R and S was chosen at random. And now C was actually generated as an encryption of M, not of M prime. And uh, now S prime, this value S prime was generated as an output of S fake, right? On you know the real uh, randomness, the public key and, and ciphertext and the old message and the new message. And R prime was generated in the same way. And now the adversary, what he sees is the fake R, the fake S, and still the M prime, the same M prime, and the same PK and C, that's the thing that were fixed uh, kind of like beforehand. PK and C was fi fixed beforehand, M prime was kind of like fixed, say, by the adversary, and these are the, the fake randoms of the sender and receiver. And those two should be indistinguishable from one another. 
Okay, so that's uh, that's what we want. Um, okay, uh, so that's uh, about the navigability, but is this enough? You know, so what happens if, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, um, what what happens if uh, if the parties don't agree, like the other case, right? So this is talks about the case where both parties kind of like in some sense cooperate and to try to convince uh, uh, you know Alice and Bob collaborate and try to convince the mother that M prime was sent. What if they don't agree? So this doesn't say anything about about the case where they don't agree. So we have to write another you know requirement. So and this is the notion that we that we call uh, 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 off the record deniability. Which, uh, uh, which actually wasn't uh, defined before. It wasn't in the period original definitions, which uh, this is what happens when the, you know, the sender sends uh, one message and the receiver sends another message, claim another message. And, and, and then the question is, who tells the truth, right? Who is lying? Or maybe both are lying. Uh, um, so, and we want to argue, we want to require that, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the information that you see from the encryption will not help the attacker for to, to to you know to determine which is the case. Of course, there could be other information outside you know the communication that would help, but not the communication. So so here's how to require this. Uh, uh, we say that for all two messages, M and M prime. So so here's the case where uh, uh, you uh, you know you choose an R, you you choose the public keys, you choose an S, you encrypt the message M, right? And then the receiver is faking M to M prime. And what the adversary sees is the fake receiver uh, 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 randomness, the true sender randomness, and then the two messages and, and the communication. And obviously there's this consistency here. The only question is like who is lying. And the other case is the, is the symmetric case where, you know, again, uh, uh, the, the, the message that was down, okay, let's just do it. The, in the second case, again, the randomness is, is chosen. And then C is actually is an encryption of M prime, not of M. Right? So now C encrypts a different value. Uh, but now the sender says, no, I want to argue the claim that it was, uh, uh, that was uh, uh, C is encryption of M, not of M prime. So now uh, uh, you give to the adversary R the real randomness of the of the receiver, the fake randomness of the sender, the two messages, and uh, 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 the public key in the ciphertext, right? So there, are, in both cases, it's the same ciphertext. Just the question: Is it an encryption of of uh, M or M prime? So Alice uh, uh, shows randomness that shows that this uh, uh, C was generated as encryption of M, and Bob showed randomness that shows that C decrypts to M prime, and now you should be able to tell which who's right uh, and who's faking it. Uh, and, and furthermore, there should be there is another case where, in fact, uh, here I added this M double prime. Uh, where in fact C was generated with an encryption of another one, a third message, M double prime, which is neither M or, nor M prime. And uh, uh, and again, we have this thing that now both of them are lying and, uh, uh, and, 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 and you know, one lies to M and another one lies to M prime. And, and, and all of these three cases should be distinguishable from one another. Okay. Uh, hope this makes sense. So this is what you want to achieve. It kind of looks like a tall order, right? Uh, how could you hope to get such a thing? Uh, um, and But just to say that if you get that, then you really get uh, uh, what we said, uh, kind of a real emulation of uh, lead pipe communication in the sense that, you know, parties can, can freely lie about uh, the plain text. And uh, uh, even if they disagree, then you don't know who's lying. And, and furthermore, the parties can, cannot really prove uh, 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 the plain text even if they wanted to, because there's always uh, 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 you can always prove anything, right? So I just want to say that there is a caveat here: this cannot prove because uh, if you think about parties that want to cheat and to, to prove things, say for a bribe, uh, then uh uh definitely if parties are dishonest to begin with and uh, and uh want to, to enter the communication in a way so that they you know knowing that they will want a proof in the hand in the end of how they really behave then 
you know, we can always do that. Parties can always do it. You cannot really uh, prevent them from doing it. For instance, they can just use the digits of phi or the social security number as uh, the seed for the randomness. So then that kind of makes them completely deterministic and, you know, there's not no, nothing you can do about it. Um, so so, so the, the, this result, this statement holds only in the case where the parties actually follow the protocol during the execution. Somehow the randomness is fresh during the execution and the, the, the desire to cheat only comes later. Okay, and then if this is the case, then what, what I said holds is that they cannot really prove what, what they, how they, uh, uh, what, what they sent or what they received, even if they wanted. Uh, and just to say that this this notion that the, we, the, uh, a guarantee or, or force honesty during the execution uh, uh, can be done in physical means and actually makes sense in some settings. In fact, it was uh, it was studied in papers, early papers, say in the context of voting, if there is a voting booth that uh, uh, where you know the uh, uh, whatever encryption you do is is done by a machine that uh, forces uh, uh, honest generation of the randomness. Uh, uh, then even if the later you're being told what the randomness was, you cannot prove things if things are deniable this way. I mean, you yourself can tell, but you cannot prove it to other other people, which is sometimes useful. Um, okay, uh, so just to say that there are uh, uh, other related notions. So there is the notion of non complete encryption, which also talks about uh, being explaining, being able to explain randomness. But this is uh, it's significantly weaker. It's it's for a different context. In that case, you know the the. The, the ciphertexts uh, that you can later open in many ways are kind of dummy ciphertexts that don't really contain any information and just for simulation purposes here we want you know the same ciphertext the same keys that are actually used to contain for, to, to transfer information you should be able to 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 lie about um, uh, and then there's also another notion which is called uh, flexible or multi-distribution dual scheme deniability different names for the same thing uh, uh, and this is also significantly weaker in the sense here you kind of like parties can later argue they they're allowed in the model to to lay, argue that they actually use a different scheme or maybe the same scheme but a different uh, a randomness generation process uh, uh, in order to show that they did something else this may give you some plausible deniability in court but it doesn't really convince and in particular all those schemes uh, uh, still allow parties to kind of, if they really wanted to prove what they really did even for a bribe, they could do it. Even they only do it after the fact when the uh, uh, the, the, random, the initial randomness was honest. And so this is something that uh, uh, our notion doesn't allow, and this this notion is too allow. Okay, so so well, this is uh, um, kind of a side note. Okay, so where do we stand with this uh, with this concept, right? So with this deniable encryption, what is uh, what is the state of the art? Um, so uh, okay, so 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 first, uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, go first. Yes, so so the notion was proposed in '96, and uh, uh, and then we we had this result. We had uh, kind of like a quote unquote weak scheme. Uh, uh, which uh, uh, which allows deniability with some polynomial, you know, it, the 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 the, the uh, detection probability of the probability the probability of distinguishing between fake and real goes down to zero, but polynomially in a kind of linearly in the length of the ciphertext or the work of the parties. So you can get it's small, but you know you have to pay. It's not really satisfying. And in fact, there were a lot of attempts to 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 improve this. Uh, 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 myself and many others, and independent works, and 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 published wrong results. Not published, I mean like posted the uh, wrong results. And it's been a while. Uh, and in fact, for many years, we you know we had one real extra result, which is actually a negative result, uh, uh, by uh, Bendin and al. that showed that. Uh, uh, Cannot have two message receiver deniable, which implies also by deniable, um, if you only have two messages, but really nothing else. And and it really kind of it wasn't clear that it can be done. And in fact, uh, I myself uh, oscillated over the years between trying to prove that it can it cannot be done. Um, and then there was this uh, 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 kind of like uh, really breakthrough result by Sahai and Waters in, uh, uh, that actually showed that using uh, indistinguishability obfuscation, you can actually get 
standard, standard deniable encryption, uh, which was uh, uh, amazing, and and it was uh, really uh, highlighted and showed uh, the, the the immense power of obfuscation uh, uh, as a concept, and also as uh, in distingu distinguishability obfuscation as a technical uh, a realization of it that is you know could uh, potentially be constructed maybe and 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 can can be used to argue things. So that that was uh, that was great, um, and then. Okay, so but but still, how do we get by deniability, right? This is also some, only standard deniable. Um, so, in fact, how do you even get receiver deniable? So, receiver deniable, uh, uh, luckily, uh, uh, was easy. We can get it uh, easy from standard deniable. In fact, there was a transformation already in the CDNO paper. So, here is an easy uh, uh, three message receiver deniable uh, 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 scheme given any. Uh, uh, sender deniable encryption scheme, right? So you just kind of flip the the roles of the sender and receiver. So it's Alice wants to send a message to Bob, and now we want to protect Bob from 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 attack. So uh, uh, so Alice is not going to be the the uh, the receiver, the decryptor. He sends a public key to Bob. Bob just chooses a random bit B and uh, and uh, and sends it over in a deniable way. And then Alice just XOR one time pads uh, her message with uh, with the bit B that it decoded, right? And now, uh, uh, if if you if you try to 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 attack Bob, Bob can just deny uh, the bit B because you know he's the sender here, and 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 we're done. Uh, great. So we have a three message uh, receiver denial, which in some sense kind of you know. Puts this bound in in a little bit kind of like a, 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 a kind of a, a different light, but actually this bound will come up in a minute. It's going to be very important for us. Um, anyway, so this is it. Uh, in fact, you can actually get something slightly stronger than that. You can actually have a different notion, which I didn't talk about yet, uh, which is said receiver and sender deniable. So it's a scheme that is going to be uh, 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 secure for the case where the, the mother goes to Alice. Or when the mother goes to Bob, the same scheme, uh, but uh, not necessarily when the mother, you know, goes to both. It's not still not by denial, right? And you can do it by just, you know, doing the trick twice, you know, one in each direction. Now we have a scheme that is uh, is deniable for each one of those separately, uh, but uh, this scheme kind of breaks completely when the mother sees uh, both keys. When the adversary gets to see all the keys, things uh, break completely. Which really again highlights the how uh, you know how hard it is to do this by deniability because now the adversary has potentially a complete view of the system, uh, which again kind of uh, brings the question: Is it this at all possible? No. Uh, uh, so 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 just to say, so this is again to highlight the fact why this is such a strange animal. So so in standard, you know, think about key exchange. In standard key exchange, uh, uh, you know, the the, uh, the the Alice and Bob. You know, know the communication. They know some hidden state, and uh, and Alice, uh, they, oh, the, sorry, the adversary just see the communication. And it cannot uh, see the secret information. Uh, in 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 the by denial uh, things, the, the the adversary is much stronger, right? So so the adversary sees both the communication and the hidden state, or whatever it thinks it's the full hidden state. Uh, uh, except that it's the wrong one, and still it should be unable to tell what is the real hidden state. Right, so in some sense, it allows if, if if this is possible, it allows kind of like rewriting of history or parts of of history of some parts of the system. Right, so you can have some parts of the system that uh, something has happened there, but somehow the information there is erased, is never propagate uh, to anywhere else because you can actually later argue anything about what happened, even if uh, I, you know everybody on the outside thinks they see everything. So it's kind of like a strange concept. And uh, it's, again, it's not clear that it's possible. However, uh, I wouldn't be here if, if it wasn't. And indeed, as always in crypto, you know, the, uh, we can always uh, uh, pull uh, tricks out of hats and do things. So we actually prove it. Uh, so we, we show, we build the interactive encryption, which is by deniable and also off the record deniable according to definition that I said. It is, has uh, three messages, which is optimal. 
Well, it uses sub-exponential indistinguishability obfuscation in one-way functions, and this is kind of less optimal, but it is what it is. Uh, and also, uh, uh, um, we use a model uh, uh, with access to, uh, uh, to, to uh, the parties have access to some re public reference string, which is, when it's, you know, it's, it's a public, short, global, everybody, the adversary and the honest parties have access to the same reference string. And in fact, what we use this reference string for is just going to be some obfuscated programs. So we're going to have some number, we'll see six obfuscated programs, you know, the same six for all the worlds, for all the encryptions for the Safatex. Think of it as generated by Microsoft for the, office, for the IO arm of Microsoft. Uh, and, uh, uh, and these programs are published once and for all and used by everybody. Um, so uh, this is the model. And in fact, if potentially one can do obfuscation kind of like uh, in, in, uh, 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 in a public coin sort of way, then you you won't even need that. All you need is just a common reference string and, and then trusted randomness and then everybody could just do it on their own. Um, so, you know, maybe it, you don't even need that. Uh, for all we know. Um, so uh, another feature for Scheme is that the, the receiver faking algorithm, uh, it's not going to use the original message or, or secret randomness at all, it's just the public transcript. So it's a little bit like this one-time pair thing. Everything is publicly uh, 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 deniable, which is, which is, I think, it's a it's nice property. Um, anyway, so so let's try to, uh, trying to describe what we're going to do, how the scheme looks like a little bit. Um, so, but the, but the purpose for the, of this talk, I'm going to think of obfuscation as a black box uh, thing. So, so all the, the programs are going to give is ideal black boxes. Uh, so everybody can run them and see the input and the outputs, uh, uh, but nobody sees what, what happens inside, kind of completely hidden. Uh, of course, in the paper, we uh, use I.O., which is much weaker and, and, and gives us a lot of pain and misery to deal with, but uh, 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 we did. But we is kind of euphemism. Oksana right. no did. Yeah. Just some more context. So... Um... Why do you need the, the CRS? Can't the receiver just send a random string to the sender? Uh, great question. So, in fact, in the, in the Sahai Waters result, where they did only sender deniability, that's what they did. They, the, the, actually, in fact, we're going to do it in a second. Uh, uh, um, there is no CRS. I mean, in some sense, the sender it, it obfuscates its sense. But in our case, uh, uh, the the um, you know every so, so who's going to obfuscate right because it, it can be sender it can't be the receiver because uh, uh, the 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 mother wants to see everything uh, so in some sense with our current notions of obfuscation we cannot do it because we don't know how to do that. I'm confused. What does the series buy you? It's not like the mother can see more uh, when you do. Uh, well, the, 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 but the series. The series, but the, the, mother, the mother doesn't see the original programs, just see the obfuscated programs. And in particular, the programs are going to hide keys, the secret keys that only the programs will know and nobody else will know. Oh, okay. So series is not just a random string. It isn't a no, right. It's, it has hidden randomness. And it's important that it has hidden randomness. And <laughs> uh, yeah. And in fact, you know, I, it's it's a it's a great question. Can you do it without uh, hidden randomness? So I have no idea how to do it, and uh, 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 I don't think anybody knows or even knows how to do obfuscation with hidden with public randomness uh, uh, in a general I/O. But there exist obfuscation schemes for simple for simple functions, and the point function obfuscation, for instance, that is public randomness. Uh, uh, and I don't know of any concrete reason to think that there couldn't be a, 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 a public randomness obfuscation of everything. I don't know. Uh, that's a great question. Okay, uh, uh, but how far is this from, uh, uh, in terms of the assumptions in it, if you want to base it on some concrete assumptions, how feasible is this? One-way functions are fine, but to get the obfuscation you need? 
so so the obfuscation you know it's down to whatever we know how to do obfuscation today right so so today we can uh, do obfuscation from the, the number of candidates out there uh that you can just assume that they're secure or you can try to to prove them based on uh kind of different assumptions on specific uh, uh, uh random generators and specific uh, uh uh i think that's in some sense today in, in one of the uh uh avenues right so, so uh they doing using uh, uh Berliner maps and uh, uh and and generate you know certain generators of a, a very specific structure and they assume that these are secure and if you have that then you have essentially a yo but in general you know I, I i don't care about that i just use a yo as a black box and whatever other uh uh, uh, uh construction you give me that is a yo is uh, i'm fine with it yeah, so it's a great question. It is a whole general question about IO, and you know, is it legitimate or not legitimate to, to to treat it as a primitive because we don't really know how to construct it from standard assumptions. But it's I think it's more of a philosophical discussion, you know. So uh, somehow now it seems to me less and less or whatever it's going to be more and more surprising if somebody will prove that uh, io cannot exist uh, uh so uh, uh we just treat it as, as a primitive and then separate the question of how to construct it from how to use it um okay so so okay but but again for for, for this talk for the, for understanding what's going on i'm just going to think about uh, a black box obfuscation or even kind of like a, le uh, a real physical obfuscation just for for the sake of uh thinking about it uh of course in the paper everything is done for my own. um okay so but let's remind ourselves uh uh, uh how sahai water uh denial encryption works Okay, so, so in a sense, what they say is that any public encryption essentially can be made sender deniable using obfuscation. So how do they do that? The main idea is to kind of encode a hidden trigger in the random input, right? So there's a random input for the, for the sender and then they kind of encode stuff it kind of like uh like like oh like a good uh, uh, uh virus writer you, you kind of that's how you would do a virus you just encode things in, in innocent information which is in this case the the uh the uh the randoms uh, uh so now you know originally you know there was a public encryption scheme now the the the, the public key for the new program is going to be essentially an obfuscated program uh as we said before that the uh, uh, key generation obfuscated, and, and this program now has to, has the following structure. Uh, uh, it has its own kind of like red small key K here that is hidden inside the program and nobody else knows. Uh, and, and it looks at the gets as input the message and the randomness to send the randomness. Uh, in, uh, but what it does is first checks if the randomness uh, 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 encodes a, a hidden instruction. Uh, uh, a hidden instruction, which means uh, uh, M and C. And uh, uh, if really the randomness encodes M and C and M is the other input, then you're going to output C as your, as your output, which is your cipher text. Otherwise, you're going to do the usual thing, which is just encrypt using uh, M and S, but you, know, to, you can't really use the specific S. You have to kind of hash it first, never mind. Uh, uh so this is uh, uh uh so this is what you do and of course uh, for every such a virus you need a command and control and the command and control will be the uh the s fake program which also will have the same key that uh that is shared by this one it will also be part of the public key uh, and this uh, uh, S-fake will say, you know, he gets a message and a cipher text and outputs a random looking uh, 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 string, which encodes the instruction of MC, right? So uh, uh, in this way, and that's essentially it, right? And now everybody can, can go, and this is public information, right? So everybody can take a, 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 a cipher text that was generated by the scheme and uh, any message of its choice, and now generate uh, S that will make the suffix as consistent with S and the message of their choice. And, and, and that's it. Beautiful idea. Uh, so, okay. So can we generalize this idea? Uh, so it sounds like a pretty strong idea. Uh, can, can, can everything be made deniable? 
uh, in particular, you know, so so uh, uh, you can make any algorithm kind of explainable. You know, for every say given input output pair, we can have an algorithm which has the same functionality everywhere except for this particular input output pair. So my view, just I take this idea, apply it to all the other one to Gen and Deck, and 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 uh, and then we would essentially be done. So it's just this work. So it's not so simple, of course. Uh, but the caveat is that, uh, that, that this hidden trigger idea, it gives you local explainability, right? It can give you a way to kind of uh, 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 change the output of an algorithm in a specific point uh, in a way that's undetectable. Uh, but the reliability requires more than that. Also, you need some global consistency of the fake information with everything else. And this is kind of harder to achieve. And this is what this is where you need to do a lot of work. Uh, uh, so let me try to give you to to to, to exemplify this by trying to use the same uh, the, the, that it's high watt trick to do uh, 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 receiver deniable encryption. Um, so how how will we do that? So now we want to uh, the receiver has actually two algorithms, right? He has the key generation and the decryption algorithm. Uh, so it's slightly more complicated, but the same idea. Uh, uh, so we're going to take the, the obfuscated key generation algorithm, and here we have to have to move to the world where this this key generation algorithm uh, is actually was given by somebody else, like uh, Microsoft. It's again this world, uh, this uh, world where the programs are given from above, right? Um, so so uh, because there is no kind of uh, key generator to 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 do it to to generate it. Um, so anyway, so I have this key generation algorithm, uh, which is obfuscated, but it has this hidden trigger again. So what do I do? I get this uh, random SR. I will first run it again with hash first, whatever. To the, I cannot use exactly the same R. Never mind. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and I generate an encryption key, and decryption key, and the and honest ones. But then before I output them, first I check if R really encodes a hidden trigger. And if so, then I code this hidden trigger also in the decryption key because I have to move it on, move the information onwards. Uh, so this is what the key generation does. And then there's the obfuscated decryption, which accordingly get, takes the decryption key, the ciphertext. And then if I check if the decryption key is really encode some hidden uh, trigger, if yes, then it follows. And if not, just run the, uh, the standard decryption, okay? Uh, and, and there is this command and control, which is the receiver fake, uh, uh, which again gets a, a ciphertext and a message, and it outputs a random looking uh, uh, randomness for key generation, which has the hidden con uh, a command to decrypt C as M, right? So this would be the kind of the natural way to, to, to apply this high water trick to, to decryption. So let's try to run it. Let's try to use it. Uh, um, so, so okay. So, so we, so we, we use the scheme. So first, uh, uh, the, the uh, we do the experiment, right? For there's, there's the public key, uh, uh, and then there is the ciphertext being sent of some message, and then the kind of the attacker says, open this uh, uh, public key in ciphertext to the message, you no, know, whatever. It's different than what was said, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to just, uh, great, we're going to run R fake on C and M, decrypt C to M, and we get this R, which encodes this uh, hidden trigger that, you know, M should be uh, uh, decrypted to C. And then uh, uh, the attacker checks. It checks that really gen of R outputs uh, PK and DK, where PK, the same PK is here. Great. And then it checks that the DK in the decryption with, D, with C and DK decrypts M. Everybody's happy. Okay, but now let's uh, let you know the attacker uh, tries to do it again, right? So so now uh, 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 with the same public key, uh, uh, tries to decrypt. Uh, 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 here's a different ciphertext, and it tries to see uh, uh, to see uh, how you know it needs to fake now the randomness so that uh, this other ciphertext C1 is going to be open to M1, right? So uh, now we want to give him that. Uh, um, so so we, we, we again we use our fake on you know C1 decrypts M1. We get R1, which we decrypts M1 C1. Then the uh, the attacker can check the, does the two checks that uh, uh, everything works great. But wait, 
and now they're attacking can do something else, right? Because uh, this R is supposed to be consistent not just with uh, C1, should also be consistent with C, right? And then, so now it will check that you know that also that uh, uh, that C that DK1 the same DK1 decrypt C to M, and this is not going to work, right? Because we wrote this, but we didn't write the previous one. So we need to be consistent with everything that happened so far, right? Uh, uh, not just with this one thing right now. So okay, let's let's change it. Let's ch let's change it. What are we going to do? So so essentially, we're going to uh, now when we fake, we fake. Uh, uh, we give a actually everything that happened in the past, or maybe instead of giving explicitly C and M, we can actually give the same R from here. We already has C and M inside it. So 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 we can just do that. And now we're going to have another R. This R1 now is going to encode the two pairs, kind of like uh, the both fakes. And now, kind of, we're good. Both checks work. And we can continue. But here, yeah, there's another problem going on here, right? Because uh, 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 this key has to remember all lies uh, from the past, right? So so the, the first uh, one has to remember one pair, and the second one has to remember two pairs. The third one is to remember three pairs, etc., 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 and as we know, you know, once we uh, consume too much uh, uh, key pairs, you know, we kind of get stuffed. We cannot contain anymore anything, and and so eventually, at some point, uh, this decay, if it's a fixed size, is going to run out of space, and 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 will not be able to remember all the history. We cannot remember all past lives, right? Kind of maybe a deep moral uh, point here. Uh, uh, so uh, you have to remember all lies from the past, and you just can't. Uh, uh, and, and the point is that this is not just specific to this particular uh, scheme. It's, it's a general thing, and this is really the essence of this impossibility result of why two-message uh, encryption cannot uh, be receiver deniable, because the key has to grow too much to remember all past lies. Um, OK, so so we know where you're kind of what you're up against. And uh, and but just to say that the crux of this attack is that the uh, the adversary could get the situation where we had the first uh, the same re receiver message, which is the public key in this case. They had to be consistent with many different uh, cipher texts, and therefore, kind of like the decryption key, which is kind of fixed by the public key, uh, uh, had to remember all of them. So every you know the fake one had you know we had to remember everything that happened and this is unbounded number so we can't remember all of them. Um, so so how can you know doing three messages save us? So uh, uh, well the obvious thing is that uh, uh, you know what we should do is that you know the receiver message which is here now should be a function of the first uh, message which is the sender message kind of like an unpredictable function you know every new first message uh, it's going to be a different second message and, uh, and 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 in fact this is enough if we only want to do receiver deniability and in fact this is really what happens if in that scheme that we described before uh, uh, this is why this three message is okay you know for every New first message from uh, uh, from Alice. Uh, uh, there is a new uh, message from Bob, and, uh, uh, and 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 therefore, kind of this key of Bob doesn't need to remember anything in the past. Right. So 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 we're good. Uh, the attack doesn't work. So, but the so what about by deniability? What you know? This is just receiver denial. Okay. So for by deniability, you want to have also you definitely want to have something else. Uh, um, you know, you, there is this other attack that can be done that you know the adversary can have uh, 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 you know fix the first two messages and then just uh, run many multiple uh, uh, third messages, each one of them encrypt a different value. And if the adversary could do it, and this key had to remember all the previous slides, then we would be in the same problem as before. Uh, so what we want is to actually have this property that uh, uh, oops, oh yeah. Uh, uh, then we want to have this property that uh, 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 that uh, that uh, this, the adversary cannot really do that. I mean, the attacker cannot do that. So, 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 how do we do it? So, okay. So here's here's a way to do it. Uh, and let me just give you now a, a first uh, a, a kind of sketch of the scheme. Kind of running out of time, but uh, uh, just uh, do it quickly. Um, 
So, so we have these uh, six programs. The, the, the CR is exactly those six programs. And what the party is going to do is just run those programs uh, from the, uh, the, those awful scale programs. And the beginning, uh, uh, the, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the sender it's, uh, has a message, it's randomness. It sends, say, some sort of function of, uh, with the key that is hitting the program of, uh, of SNM. Uh, the, the receiver will get, uh, uh, I have its own randomness and it gets the first message and just outputs uh, 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 a PRF of everything that it saw. This is just kind of like to fix uh, 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 those two things. And then, uh, uh, and then the third message uh, will uh, just very simply encrypt uh, uh, um, the, the, the plain text uh together with those uh, other two messages just just to tie them but to bind them all together and the and then uh, uh the 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 decryption uh well this one will be generate uh, the message only if uh, uh uh sm are consistent with uh, message one and uh and and that's only when the also when the the the, the decryption algorithm will generate the the, uh, the output so the encryption algorithm would not generate the output unless it sees that everything else is uh, uh, is consistent. It's not said here, but the decryption algorithm also gets uh, uh, all the message from before. It. It's in the next slide. Um, and the um, and 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 the S fake and, and R fake uh, uh, will just uh, well let me just not say anything about them right now. We'll get them in a minute. And this uh, just to say that this uh, encryption has to be deterministic. Okay, so so uh, the hope that we want to get in this case is that uh, uh, the the third message kind of like is fully determined, uniquely determined by the uh, the first two ones. So in some sense, all the information here in the third message is already exists in the two ones, so it can be uniquely determined, and uh, uh, and that's that's the hope that the only there is one message once those two messages are fixed, the only one third message that could potentially be decrypted, and therefore we would be good. So. It would be great. Uh, 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 so, so this is it says what I said. Uh, uh, we we well, this is what we want to get, but the point is that we cannot get there, and we cannot get there kind of in a somewhat inherent way because the scheme is uh, 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 is deniable, and the, the actually the, the very deniability of the scheme is uh, kind of like uh, forces the fact that there must be other ways to open uh, the you know. The the the, uh, the sender has, must have an S fake that allows it to have different randomnesses for for uh, for the first uh, two messages, uh, and and therefore there must be there is actually a way an attack for the adversary which I'm not going to go into details on to uh, uh, to actually have the situation where there are fixed first two messages and many third messages each one of them encrypting a different value. So 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 we we must have this case we must have this this kind of weakness that uh, we have fixed the, the those two first messages fixed and many third messages but the point is that uh, the, the you know the adversary can do that but can only do it in a one very specific restricted way uh, uh, and, and, uh, and our goal is to use this in order to fact to actually make it so that the the fake art will not have to remember things in the past. And uh, um, so, just to say in in a word more clear, what's going on there? So, so, so again, there's this very specific way for the adversary to generate fake s's one from another uh, uh, over time. You can only do it in sequence in a very specific way. This is kind of like the 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 uh, guarantee that we get from the scheme so far. And uh, uh, and the same is for those meshes threes can be only be generated fake ones one from you know. Uh, in sequence found from the one from the other. And uh, the, the way to use it, that this limitation, the way we use it is the following. So, so what we say, we actually, we add uh, level numbers to fake messages and to fake uh, uh, random strings. So uh, each, uh, 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 each third message here also have a level, which is now it's a number. Uh, in the beginning, it's zero. And later on, we kind of increment it every time there's a new fake. And this this level is kind of like information that has been kind of like transmitted subliminally 
uh, between the messages and the 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 R's, the the, the fake receiver, the fake, fake receiver randomness, and the fake uh, uh, sending randomness, and uh, uh, and there's a logic of how this uh, uh, these levels uh, go about. So it's the beginning starts with zero, as fake increments every time, uh, uh, and uh, and message three just takes the level from the uh, from the from its randomness, and uh, uh, and R takes the level. Uh, 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 from uh, from from again from from the the message that was used in this uh, uh, input to to fake to our fake, and uh, and and there is a logic here of how to deal with those levels, and I'm not going to get into it. But the point is that uh, once we do that, uh, uh, the you know the levels restrict the way the adversary works, and the adversary can only generate transcript one by one, and the, and the, in those transcripts the level is being written. It cannot speed it up. Can only do it. One, you know, from level one to level two, level three, level four, uh, kind of it, it's in like locked in into these levels, uh, uh, and 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 therefore, uh, you know, so we get to a situation where uh, uh, you know, in fact, maybe the, the the killer point is what I said here. So 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 the the, the decryption algorithm has two levels. It gets the levels from its own randomness and the level from the message. And uh, uh, in in an honest mode, in a normal way, it's going to be the same level. Uh, but it can just say that I'm going to decrypt only if the level in the, in in my, my in my randomness is smaller than the level in the transcript uh, in in the message. And once you do that, you you're okay because the adversary cannot generate previous transcripts it's it's hard to find and uh and once you do that you don't have to remember uh, uh past uh, uh fakes once you do that the 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 fake r doesn't have to remember anything that happened the fast just have to remember the current fake and uh this level mechanism is what protects it protects the the scheme um okay uh so Oh, well, okay, so this is just said what I said before. So this is, in essence, that's kind of the, the end of the logic of the scheme. So this levels mechanism and this enforcement of uh, uh, of only incrementing levels, you only decrypt if the level in your randomness is smaller, is higher than the level in the in, in the subtext, uh, uh, is uh, is what is what saves us. Um, and uh, uh, and the, that's essentially it in some sense on, on the kind of the level of, of high level design. But now there is a question, you know, uh, 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 what happened in, in, in real construction? So we have this black box model and even here one has to think, you know, we just talked about one specific attack and this is the only attack. But if you think about the black box model, it's relatively easy once you see, look at it, to see that this is really the only thing that can happen. Otherwise, the adversary sees nothing, can do nothing. Uh, then of course there is a question of how to deal with uh, with AO. But right now it's a much bigger attack surface, you know. And uh, what can you do? So what you do is so there is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears going on here. Uh, and um, and and just to say, you know, this one slide for the AO aficionados. Uh, uh, so so what we have here, we have like six very interactive programs, right? That actually send messages from each other. And uh, and we need to kind of like show that the, the, these entire six programs work in a way as expected. And we have those programs which have our fixed polynomial size and they can be run uh, uh, on, you know, for arbitrarily long polynomial number of steps uh, of chains of executions. And we have to, uh, uh, and, and, and we and we have to make sure that everything behaves that it is, and uh, uh, and what makes it harder than usual, uh, more than before, is the fact that uh, usually will be, you know, there are, there are works talked about uh, 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 this case where you know the short programs that run for for long polynomial number of of, of steps, and you have to guarantee. Uh, 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 Properties about the execution of those programs, but in, in usually in those cases, uh, you don't really want to hide. You don't need to hide how many times the programs have been run. I mean, that was kind of knows already implicitly if you know this. He ran the program five times or, or six times or a million times or a million and one times. Uh, in our case, actually, we do want to hide it, and that's actually the point. 
The point is to hide the level because you don't want the adversary to know whether you know the the the, the randomness that it got in the beginning was an honest one, which means level zero, or a fake one, which means level one. So uh, uh, and. Uh, so and the, the adversary should just continue running this thing and the whole thing should behave the same regardless of whether the level in the in the, in, the, in the randomness was zero or one so you want to hide the level uh and this is something that uh, was not only for that causes a lot of problems in particular we need to use tricks like uh tricks that uh were used in the works for the uh end of the line uh, uh hardness uh from io uh, uh we we have to use this uh, uh the, the techniques used there um of uh uh um uh, uh panet and, and uh uh and rosen uh and but we actually you have to use it in, in in a more uh uh complex setting because in our setting it's not really a line it's actually kind of a tree or a forest of things happening and we have to show that uh still the adversary doesn't know where it is uh, uh in this path um so uh but anyway so this is what we need to do with this is we do this was a lot of blood sweat and uh, uh, tears to do it which actually brings me to uh, uh to the takeaways um so so beyond the obvious takeaway you could actually finally do this by the enable of of a record encryption uh, uh we more generally we can actually work on this uh, uh um we have tools to work with uh, with IO programs in this complex setting, uh, but what we have right now, even though we tried to some obstructions, we obstructed things as much as we could. We really uh, uh, or Oksan and Senu, you know, uh, uh, spent a lot of blood in order to to do it. It's very complex uh, and subtle, and uh, somehow my takeaway from this is that in order to fully exploit this power of io in, in more complex settings we really need uh, more abstractions techniques and tools that to kind of like allow us to do things in a more uh, 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 high level way that still preserves you know correctness and soundness uh, uh, rather than work in assembly all the time uh, kind of some some program programming language abstractions that actually are your friendly uh, uh, we, we need that uh, and given that IO is such a powerful thing and we can do such cool things as this with it, you know, we should be able to, to develop the technology to do it. Um, so, that's, uh, uh, so that's one takeaway. Uh, another takeaway, which is again more going to the uh, takeaway of, of the actual uh, problem at hand, which is uh, the, the, the deniable encryption. So the natural question is, uh, what about uh, computation, secure computation? Uh, now you want to get uh, with our works about deniable or, or non uh, uh, um, incoercible secure, secure computation, but you know what we know is limited, and potentially we can do much more now with these techniques. So uh, you know we could talk about different questions about you know multi-deniable, multi-party computation of the record, multi-party computation. Uh, and there are lots of questions, even formulated questions, what it is that we can cannot do. Uh, I think it's kind of open season. Lots of questions there. The, uh, uh, a lot of future work. So I think that's it. Hey, thank you, Ren. Any more questions? Maybe let me maybe let me ask you one question. Uh, do we is it known if uh, say by deniable encryption implies I/O? Is it is it necessary to have I/O? A uh, great question. Uh, so uh, uh, I don't know. So in fact, you know, you can even ask the question. Uh, uh, um, but I don't know. For Biden level, it's a stronger variant. But the the uh, I know my, me myself and others are trying to do. Now that we know the number encryption from IO, can we do it without IO? There are many other primitives out there, right? You know, that we, the beginning we just know what to do from IO. Later we can do without. I think we just lost a voice from you, but uh, I heard everything until the last word. Um, ah, sorry, sorry, it was me. Uh, yeah, it's me. Sorry, I muted myself. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, so, so, uh, uh, so I was saying. So, so even uh, you know, just just a standard enable encryption to do without IO, we have no idea how to do it. 
uh, uh, even though it's a great question. I mean, there's nothing that suggests that it would be uh, uh, necessary. I don't know. I mean, the, 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 the more complex you get, then maybe IO is necessary. But uh, uh, um, I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, I, I, I don't even have an intuition. In some sense, it is the quintessential application of, of obfuscation. It is ability to, to kind of insert hidden triggers into programs and do whatever you want, kind of modify them like that. And at least morally, this is the uh, uh, the epitome of obfuscation, but maybe not, I don't know. Thanks. Any more questions? Okay. I'm going to take us offline, but you want to come to stay?